Hey guys, okay, here's the recording for the Moji Pro version 3.0, and this is very cool. There's something that we did in here that's by uh, popular demand. It's it's really a big deal. It's very cool. Uh, aside from that, two basic fixes that are interesting. Okay, here we go. So let's say I wanted to, okay, let me just load up a profile in the Moji Pro. Okay, so you can kind of see how this goes. Okay, here's a profile. All right, so there's a profile for you. Now, the first fix is this. Um, or fix, change, upgrade, whatever you want to call it. Here's what would often happen. People would try to create one of these things on their own and they think, okay, I need a project. So they create a project, whatever it is, ABC123 or some project name. Uh, and, and they go forward from there. And that works. Uh, other people, they want to do the subdomain runs and you have to set those up separately. We have different files for that. For instance, just to remind you, um, just to make it clear, if I go into my HB here, there's hb geo and hb no geo and then there's the subdomain versions of those things okay and the subdomain versions are set up a little differently so i have to use those and use those profiles don't mix and match these they have the similar names but that's only because they're in different places already okay they're different all right so some people say well, I want to do a subdomain run, and so they set up their subdomain run like 123.moji-samples.com, okay? And so then they go forward from there. Now, here's what a lot of people would make the mistake of doing. They'd say, don't I need to put it in both places? They just don't know, and so they go like this, maybe something like that. Now, this is wrong, right? In order for that to work, I actually have to have a subfolder within a subfolder here, like ABC123, if it's an exacting name, okay? And that's not correct, and that's not the way it's supposed to work, and the Moji sitemap will wind up in this ABC123 folder instead of on the root of the website like it's supposed to, okay? And now, add-on domains are different. Forget about add-on domains for a minute. We're not talking about that. We're talking about this right here. This cannot be correct, whether it's a primary domain or an add-on domain. You either have this at the end or you have it in the beginning. And one thing that we decided to do just to make sure to catch people in the act uh, so that they know better is this. If you did something like that and hit next, it's going to tell you. The domain name URL is not a valid URL. The domain name URL contains a subdomain and a subfolder. You can either have a subdomain or a subfolder in the domain name, but not both. Please correct the domain URL and try again. Okay, that's cool, right? So then you're going to be good to go. Now, that's not going to affect or should not affect. Matter of fact, now I'm buying my nails because I didn't test it personally. ABC123. It should be that if you use www. you're fine, and you are. That's right, because I, I knew I pointed that out, and so the programmer got it right. But if this is anything else, if it's like... F, <laughs> and then this is like an A, okay? Anything like that, bam, you get your note about it being wrong. And if you take it out just to the slash, you're fine, you're good to go, okay? So it's just a way of making sure that you get everything right. So that's the first fix that we did. All right, so let me just not um, do any of that now because I want to do the next thing, okay? The next fix, what's the next fix? Let me get back to ABC123, okay? Or whatever I want to call this thing, all right? Uh, let's say I'm going to save that and here's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm just going to go create those pages really fast. Okay. So that I can show you the next thing that we did, which is kind of cool. Okay. And so it'll be done a second. Let me grab my coffee. Mm -hmm. If we go into our runs folder, here we go. I've got an ABC123 folder like I'm supposed to, and then some other things generated by the automation, the profile menu generator that actually were there earlier. So don't, I mean, don't worry about them anyway. Uh, the automation takes care of everything. But if I go in there, okay, here's how it used to be. Your master-sitemap.html has <coughs> uh, hyperlinks to every sitemap.html. That much is good and that much is correct. Now, most of you know that all these sub-sitemaps and people would want to go and submit these to Google and they say, man, that's a lot of sitemaps. And that's when we came out with a fix a long time ago. I forget what version now, 1.4 or something maybe, uh, where we created a master-sitemap.txt, which goes with it. Now, this .txt is not connected to your website, but if you open it, 
it has all of the links for all of those sitemaps, right? And, and most of you guys already know this. And it's got all those links that got created just now during this run I just did. So these are all of the pages within all of those sub sitemaps, okay? Now that's good. And you can take something like this, which is UTF-8 encoded. You could select all and copy, and you could actually submit this thing to your uh, to Google Webmasters, or you could ping these links. And you wouldn't do it from here, really. You'd do it from the website. You'd go to, you know, your website. And just to point out real fast to make sure you get it, you go to, uh, mo like in this case, moji-samples.com slash, and you're used to, like, ABC123, and then it would be master-sitemap.html and you would have clicked to it and you see this in the address bar and you see the hyperlinked html page version and then you say what if i want to see this page here then you just change .html to .txt and go there instead and when you do that you see this page so you already know what your um uh master sitemap link should be when you go to say google webmasters or if you go to ping these links, here's your link. You know, just change .html to .txt and voila, there it is. Now, here's the thing we did that's different with it, okay? This is different. In the old days, and you guys would see this all the time, um, everywhere where it says index.html, usually what you saw was sitemap.html. would be a link to the sitemap.html page. Of course, these are all links to HTML pages, right? It's just in text format one link per page you know but it was sitemap.html and so then you'd wonder why all your sitemap links are getting um indexed first and that's usually because they're so high level right they come right off of the front page through the moji sitemap the master sitemap links and there you would go well a lot of people are asking hey can we change this to index.html to catch the main page within every folder and the answer is yes that's what we did so now on the txt instead of producing sitemap.html every case and that was just tons of sitemaps right all those sitemaps every case has been replaced with index.html and you could have done it manually on these but i mean who wants to do that <laughs> so that's been updated, so that's cool. So now it, you should be so interested in, in getting the sitemaps to rank as the HTML pages, the, the main page for each of these subfolders from your menu items, right? Your menu item. Now, um, another question would be, does that mean your sitemap uh, links will not get indexed? No, that's not true because, of course, there is a master-sitemap.html with sitemap links, sitemap.html links. And the bots are going to find it anyway, even if you don't submit it to Google sooner or later, the bots will find it. But the pages that we're pointing out, especially for Google submissions or submitting to pinging services, the pages we're pointing out are the index.html pages. Theoretically, if you were doing pinging before, and pinging sort of, you know, it's, it's gray area territory. It tends to be risky, very risque. Uh, and so we always suggest don't do it. But you could. You could select all these links. You could go to pingfarm.com or whatever it is, bulkping.com, and you could paste in this whole page and hit go, and it'll just start pinging, pinging, pinging. Now, theoretically, in the old days when you pinged them, it had a bunch of sitemap.html links in it. Maybe Google didn't like the idea of the sitemap.html because all they have on them are links to other pages, right? So it almost just looks like a collection of eyeball links. But if you actually have links to pages instead of sitemaps, and there is no sitemap on here anywhere, that's the coolest thing, like Control F, right? Sitemap. There is no sitemap. Uh, then there's no more sitemap links that you would wind up pinging and wind up submitting to Google uh, Webmasters. It's just strictly HTML pages, index.html, and everything else. All right, so there's that change. Okay, so that's two changes so far, right? The first one is just the catch on the domain name, making sure you get it formatted, right? No ABC dot with a folder. And then the second one is the one I just showed you from the master-sitemap.txt page, having index.html instead of sitemap.html. Now, the third change is the coolest. And in order to illustrate, let me delete. This is the coolest. A lot of people have been suggesting this kind of idea, and especially because they're interested in doing it. They say, hey, Dave, 
you know, uh, what if I want to do a no geo run, okay, something without geo, okay, whether it's subdomain or not, or even a geo run, but they'll say, what if I want to do a no geo run, and I just want something like 10 keywords, okay, and that's the way the sample is set up anyway, so that you can sort of understand the concept, right, get used to the way the software works. They say, I just want 10 keywords, so I just want, you know, 10 menu items, and that hasn't been caught up. Let me just do it real fast. Menu generator, var3 with 10 results. Boom, boom. Submit. Done. All right. And I've just got 10. And therefore, I just have one per page here. Right? Now, a lot of guys say, okay, I've only got 10 keywords. I don't want to create any 200 times 10 pages or 2,000 pages just on 10 keywords. Can we make it better micromanage? Now, what did it used to be the problem? It used to be that when you put a bunch of keywords in or just a few, you had to actually produce a lot of pages to avoid broken links. And some of you guys know that. We always had to raise the file count up quite a bit. I'd always recommend, you know, 100 or 200, maybe 50 or so, like bare minimum. Not anymore. That's what's different. Every one of these now when we're producing pages, it's going to get an index.html. So no matter how many or how few you generate, there will be an index.html for every one of these links on the page. All right. And you guys probably already know what that means. If I if I just take a quick look at a page just to illustrate. Okay. I don't know if Moji Dash Samples has a main page right now or not. Uh, it does. Okay. These are those, this is just the main page to the project, but this is the VAR 8001, 8002, 8003, 8004, and so on. And then some of these just kind of repeat themselves as the way we intentionally set it up. So we said 10, right? And that's why you, you do 10 results. When you do the menu generator, you do 10 results, you know, off of your keywords. That's just the way we set it up. By the way, it doesn't have to be your keywords, of course, but that's just the way we set it up. We thought this was a good idea and we like it. So anyway, there you go. But you'd wind up with broken links if you did a small number of pages, right? Uh, now, no. If I wanted to do just 10 pages, it's actually going to create 20, right? Because it's going to create one uniquely generated page for each of these. And it's also going to create, just the way it works, one uniquely generated index page for all of these. So you can make a run as small as 20 pages very efficiently in seconds, right? Or whatever, however long it takes you to do, but very, very, very fast. So for guys who say, I just want maybe two pages at most on my website that deal with that keyword, two pages that deal with that, two pages that deal with that, I just want to generate a run that small. And then I want to come back later with a new keyword list. You know, some new keywords I want to go after, my next stack, whatever it is, 10 or 20 or 50 or whatever it is. Uh, and then I just want to generate like double that number of pages. So I have no more pages on my website about any one keyword than two. Now, what's the advantage there? I've seen guys get to the point where they're just um, spamming the keywords really because they're using too few keywords with way too many pages. And sooner or later, that's like, too many pages where Google said that they liked it when it had oh I don't care let's say you just had 10 keywords a lot of people go a lot deeper than that they go 50 we say 50 is optimal anyway uh, but people say I put up a bunch of pages and it worked I put up a bunch more and my ranking dropped and there was a chat about I'll bet and I'll bet it's true that if you just do too many uh, then what's good, too many pages per keyword then you're you've got like 50 or 80 or 100 or 200 uh, keywords or 200 pages on on your website about each keyword now with geo targeting which is what we're always recommending anyway then it basically doesn't apply we're going after the geo targeted keyword combinations and you've got some list of however many geo targets 32,000 if you use the whole nation you know uh, and they go with the keywords and Google tends to index them and they tend to rank for their geo target plus keyword combinations but when you do non-geotargeted runs and you just do a small number like this, then that can be a problem. And in some cases, I've seen people doctor their page titles um, or their meta tag descriptions where they just say, I want to use like a stack of keywords three times with, with pipes or dashes or something between them. I just want to like make my page title three different keywords with spaces in between, you know, or, or pipes, 
or dashes. And that is a problem because now you're going to produce the pages. And, and there are only so many combinations you can possibly go through. 3 to 11 is what? 8? Eight times three is only 24 total possible page titles, okay? So if you're trying to do 2,400 pages on your site, but you're limiting your page titles to exactly the keyword combinations, just, just trying to, you know, keyword stuff your page title. Google doesn't have a lot to go on. It sees 24, and they can kind of go with your meta tag description. That's cool. But when you do 2400 you've got like a hundred identical page titles either it looks like that or it looks like that or, or it looks like that you know but there's only but there'd be like a hundred pages in every single case and that's sort of ridiculous as a matter of fact it's horribly ridiculous especially if you have a very small meta tag description there just aren't that many combinations that come off of it if you only had you know 50 different possibilities for your meta tag description um, even that meta tag is sub to the page title. So when I saw some people would doctor that way, it's not really a good idea. And so anyway, when people are saying, well, how can I be more specific? How can I create just the number of pages I want for the keywords? You know, remember that it'll do double, but you can go as low as double. You still need at least 10 keywords to fill all the holes but it can generate as few as two pages per keyword with no broken links. That's whether you're uploading the pages yourself or letting Moji uploading the, uh, upload the pages or if you're using our automation and you're uploading the zip file and extract it. Everything will be perfect. It'll be correct. Everything will be right. And so you can do sub runs that are as specific as the number of keywords you have times two, which is only two pages on your site per keyword, which is not uh, spamming keywords anyway, no matter what, because all the rest of the stuff on the page is so unique anyway, okay? But there you go. So that's what we did. Now it's possible for you to create the leanest, meanest possible runs where you literally say, if I want as few as 10 keywords, I can get as few as 20 pages on one single project instead of 10. If you want to do that, the automation will create it 10 times. Be aware of that. So if you do file count, uh, don't do file count two. <laughs> That's just, it's not going to make sense because if it goes through each profile and does file count of two, it's always going to be this. <laughs> All right, that's not a good idea. By the way, Root, it does have some mix and match other concepts from here that come out as well. So, you know, just, just realize there can be more folders than 10. Uh, but the 10 keywords that you're after along with the root, that's what I'm talking about. And that's the most important thing. This will just tack on another couple of pages, really, or a couple of folders with page each, that kind of thing, uh, on short runs like this. And then a few more for bigger runs, maybe as many as 10 other folders, you know. Um, but usually don't even see that. Usually when you do the runs, that's what you see. And don't worry about this. The whole intention of this really is to get a page in the root, okay? All right. But yeah, if you try to do 10 different profiles with two each, then they would always be the top two with the top two. And that would be it. They never produce any other pages, right? So you got to do at least 10 and it will create 20 plus, you know, the index2.html, the sitemap.html, the sitemap.txt. So there's like a total of six pages really created. But the ones that are really the pages that matter is the index page version plus one version of the page for the keyword itself outside of that. Okay, so like two per. And so that's extremely cool. A lot of people were asking for a way to limit uh, the file count, drop it down. And that's the way to do it. And if you just wanted to do, you know, one such project, uh, production instead of the automation, of course you can do that anyway. Uh, just run one profile. And somebody said, how can you stop it from um, running all 10 without like deleting anything uh, in the system? Well, there's a way to do that. Think about this. If you go to the system folder for whatever project you're on, go to the system folder. On this finish-zips.bat file here, this finish zips, this what it's going to do is finish the zips when it's all done with everything else, right? Uh, let me add it. Actually, there's a better place to put it. No, no, there isn't because you also want your Moji sitemap links and everything else to be updated. Do this, instead of sleep 150 right before your program files WinZip, okay, where it's gonna zip up all your files, 
make the sleep 150 some ridiculous number, 9999. That way, even if you walk off and get coffee and come back, it just isn't going to be done counting those seconds. It's 9,999 seconds it's going to count. Why are you doing that? So that when you get to that point in the process where the screen just sits there and this is the last command, you can simply reach up and close it. Okay, and when you do, then you have all of your files in your Moji Auto Run folder, all your profiles and everything else, and you can just go and do it yourself with just one, right? Now, of course, if you want to change the file countdown, do it on the ZZ Auto Create, and an easy way to do it is just right click, open with Notepad, and then you'll almost see it right away. Right where it says File Count, instead of 200, just do like 20 okay boom boom and that would be all you need to do okay and frankly I don't even need to do all the automation except for the uh, emoji sitemap I could just open this thing and create 10 of these if I want them I don't I don't even need to do that let's say I just wanted to do one for a certain keyword say it was like emoji dash affiliate fine then I could open this thing okay HB Geo system, open it. Instead of going ABC123, just do Moji Dash Affiliate. Literally. And then turn it on so it uploads. If that's what you want to do, it's small. Why not? WAP. Okay. Save it. And then just go next. And maybe you need to upload your uh, related files for the images and the, you know, whatever else, CSS files and everything, whatever you put in that system. Uh, the related v5 files to folder and maybe it don't but whatever you're doing I mean it's just going to be that small we can process and run and make sure it works but it will so it created like 24 files really and it's uploading them on the server and it'll upload some more because it really has some more to get up there's a total of more pages in there so, uh, an easy way to see it is like this you see your emoji affiliate folder right click hit properties and it tells you it really has 72 files, just so you know. Okay, 72 files total. That's all the index pages and everything else. But it'll be up very soon. No broken links, even that smaller run. That's my point. So if I went here now, I could start to watch it happen. Let's say I went to Moji Samples right now. Okay. And I went to the sitemap. Moji sitemap. And I'm going to find that thing. Okay, adds it to the bottom unless you add it to the top or it hasn't gotten it up yet, which is it? Or it's in here. Oh, it's in here already. I'm sorry, because there was already one there. All right, forget it. Well, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Moji affiliate. So it's doing all this stuff now and it moved the last Moji affiliate to the, to, you know, to sitemap one, right? Because this is the new run. But literally, it's just going to be like one or two pages per. Okay, that's the idea there. And if I wanted to sort of verify that it worked, I could do this, master sitemap.html, change it to .txt. And yeah, index.html. So these are indeed the new ones because I haven't produced a run like that yet with the new version, okay? And it still has the old master sitemap one link at the bottom uh, because, well, that's just the way it works, you know? You could argue we should consider taking it off, but who cares? Um, we could take it off. Uh, anyway, there you go. And that's just because it had to download this thing and then add the link at the bottom. And it does it with the HTML page anyway. And that was why that's there at all. And maybe we should take it off the TXT or not. But nonetheless, it used to be a bunch of sitemap.html pages. It used to be sitemap.html, 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 sitemap.html. Now it's index, 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 index. Probably better for ranking. Probably better for... Um, well, ranking, getting indexed faster, probably better for getting your front pages up higher, more more central, more links connecting directly to them, and all that kind of thing. Um, because now we have a bunch more pages that link to the Moji sitemap, that link to the master sitemap, that link back to the main page of each of these projects, and we did not have it before. It is stronger, uh, so it's probably going to be a lot better anyway. All right, I think I beat that down, and for whatever reason, it's 70, and that's it, and okay, and I'm not even going to worry about it. It's nothing failed. It all went up, and so there's just no broken links. It's going to work. All right, there you go. That's a really cool thing. So you guys can do the tightest, leanest, meanest runs you want now, and you can tell someone instead of just saying, hey, I'll put a 1,000 pages up on your site, you can say, 
uh, send me keywords, uh, 10 keywords, I'll put, you know, 20 pages on your site. Send me 50 keywords, I'll put 100 pages on your site. No more than two per keyword on your entire site for any keyword batch you give me. That's kind of neat. And it really is kind of neat. It's new. It's new functionality. All right, guys, there's the 3.0. So that was the three things. Just to reiterate, it catches when you put a subdomain and a project folder. It adds the index.html pages now on that uh, master sitemap. Not Moji sitemap. Forget about that. Dot .txt, but master sitemap. Dot .txt. It's all index. And you can now do incredibly small runs that will have no broken links. On the contrast, now here's the part that, and I don't want to forget about mentioning this. Here's the part that does change that way. Think about the number of pages you're going to create versus the number of keywords anyway. If you add 800 keywords, okay, and you, you're doing that, it's going to be 800 keywords over and over again, and you're using it to create the menu, you're going to have 800 keywords here. So even if you say a file count of 20, here's the thing. This is going to be all mixed and match combinations from your 800. There's, there's going to be 80, 80 of the first of keywords here, 80 keywords here, 80 keywords there. All of these folders, right? So it's like 80 folders, 80 folders, 80 folders. So there must be an index.html for all of them, okay? All of these. And in order for that to happen, it has to create pages for every single one of your keywords here. So even if you say file count 20, if you put 800 here, yeah, it's going to generate like 800 times 6 is almost 4,800 pages <laughs> all at once. So, And there's no way around it. Uh, because it's got to generate an index page for this folder, that folder, that folder, that folder. So the way your keywords are spread out down here, no matter how they come out on each page, there is an index.html page to click to in every single case. So therefore, no broken links. So just use the number of keywords you're interested in and set the file count at least that high, if not higher. Okay. And usually it's going to be double the keywords is what you're really after. Okay. All right, there you go. Just keep in mind, though, that when it puts up the files, it's got to put up like six pages per in, in on average. So it's really six times whatever it is you have here. Okay, so just keep it in mind. But no more broken links. And if you're zipping, you don't even feel a slowdown in the operation at all because you're not going to upload with Moji Pro. You're going to upload with our new automated zipping process. And so you're not going to feel like you're sitting and waiting for anything. You know, it's going to be nice and quick on the whole. If it uploads... Um, whatever, 4,600 or 700 pages, 4,700 pages in a zip file, it'll only take a couple of minutes or so to get up. No great shakes. All right, there's that. Uh, the version 3.0 on Moji Pro. And that'll be coming out soon. By the way, for the guys who are saying, where do I find it right now? Uh, it's part of something new I haven't put out yet. Like I said, I got a 2 Moji HB functionally at this moment before i update this page i gotta update this page when i come out with new installation it's time for new installation video right just to go over all the new stuff uh, so i'm gonna do that next but anyway if you go to moji-crew.com slash do this and do it in caps number two dash moji dash hb and then take the caps off to get dot zip in lowercase like it's supposed to be in other words, this is the link. So if you type it in right, you can download that. And the readme in there is caught up. There's all these things that we're doing that are different and better and everything else about the Moji HP. I've really been able to, to iron out things that are going on on different computers and really just make it better. And we did other things. Uh, but I'll talk about that when I talk about that. All right. So you can get in now. And that has the Moji Pro version 3.0. And it has the Moji Toolbar version 17.6, the latest version of it, the one with all the right things going on. Uh, so make sure that when you download this and extract it, okay, you're going to wind up with the folder, right? And your C drive is where, you're, where you got to put it. And there it is, 2MojiHB. When you go here, go to the Get HB Requirements, right? Install the new toolbar, okay? It is new. It's got two pieces, and it is new. Yes, you can do something like cut or copy and go straight to your C drive, program files, x86 if you have it, uh, wherever it is. 
like right there and just paste it in here and when it says do you want to merge yes merge it with the one you already had and yes overwrite everything and it'll work okay that way you're all caught up i just cancel but going back then the other thing of course is mochi pro 3.0 there's the installer and so you can install it okay and that's the new Moji Pro. All right. Hope you guys enjoy it and more to come.